welcome to practical number 6 of arduino based system design lab aim of this practical is to control the servo motor using arduino before directly going into the contents of this practical let us go through some prerequisite contents so that contents are what is control system here we will see what is meaning of control system what are types of it then working principle of servo motor means basically the servo mechanism then we will understand how sg90 servo motor works because we are going to interface it with the arduino then later was we will program that using arduino id and simulate the total configuration with the help of proteus at the end we will look for some applications of servo motor because servo motors are nowadays used in almost every applications every industrial applications for control purpose so we will discuss on that so let us start with these contents what is basically the control system the control system is nothing but a system that manages that directs or regulates the other devices to achieve the desired result basically control system are going to do this task by control loops in our day to day life we come across many such control systems for example air conditioner refrigerator automatic electric iron all these are the control systems along with that there are other control systems also which are going to control the position velocity pressure temperature voltage current etc like quantities so all these are called as a control system to understand this concept we will go through some basic example so the example that we are going to look for is a simple example of temperature controller of a room basically this title can be designed in various ways so we will consider the two aspects for its design first of all we will look for design 1 in this suppose a heating element is placed in a room so heating element is going to be connected to the power supply so it is going to heat up and accordingly the temperature in the room is starts increasing when it reaches to desired temperature then power supply is going to be turned off here the power supply is going to be turned off by the user so here it's called as a manual control system because you user is going to control that system so in this case that will be open loop so such type of systems are called as a open loop systems because here there is no relationship between output and input when the temperature is going to be reached the power supply is going to be turned off by the user so it's a open loop no feedback no any type of correction is going to be made to control the system so it's a simple system then let us look for other aspect that is design to so here suppose if i use temperature sensor to monitor the temperature of a room in our previous practical we have seen what is sensor so sensor is basically a electric electronic device which is going to convert physical quantity into some measurable quantity so suppose here i use a temperature sensor to monitor the actual temperature and later words i if i am going to compare this actual temperature with the desired temperature and when the actual temperature becomes exactly equal to desired temperature then automatically the power supply should be off so what is basically this system this is system is called as automatic control system because here without user input we are going to control the room temperature and such type of systems are also called as a closed loop system because here the indication is going to be provided unless and until your actual temperature will become exactly equal to desired temperature 
in other words it's called as a error signal that is nothing but the difference between the actual temperature and desired temperature is going to be minimized or in ideal case it will make a equal to zero so that it indicates that power supply should be turned off so automatically the power supply should be turned off so such type of systems are called, called as closed loop system because here there is a feedback taken from output to input means there is some mathematical relation in between output and input so obviously both the systems are control system but if you look for design one it is called as open loop system where there is no relation between output and input but in a closed loop system there is some relation between output and input and efforts are made to minimize the error signal so obviously the design two will be the better so you can treat the servo motor is going to work with the same principle of the or that is closed loop control system in that case the feedback is going to be taken from output to input and then the error is calculated and that error is going to be minimized throughout the process so we will look for the working principle of servo motor now if you see in this diagram there is, this is nothing but external look of sg90 servo motor this is its internal and this is internal design later ways we will come to this slide before that we will discuss about the servo mechanism so that you can relate this mechanism with the closed loop control system so basically the servo motor consists of four components that is nothing but it's a dc motor only with potentiometer and some gear arrangement and some intelligent circuitry to rotate the servo motor with desired angle so accordingly we can mark these parts that is dc motor gear system arrangement potentiometer and intelligent circuitry similarly in this diagram of internal design also you can see here is the dc motor and here this is the gear arrangement so the gear of dc motor and here the output shaft of the servo motor are coupled with each other so depending upon the movement of dc motor this shaft is going to be moving and this shaft is going to be placed on a potentiometer we have seen the potentiometer in our previous session so potentiometer is having one knob if you vary the knob the resistance of potentiometer is going to vary and as the resistance changes the voltage is also going to be changed so the position of this output shaft is going to be converted to corresponding voltage and that voltage is going to be given to the intelligent circuitry to control the further things so this is nothing but the total arrangement the important part is here the best use of potentiometer is made that the output shaft is mounted on the potentiometer no so that as output shaft moves the resistance is going to be changed by same amount and the voltage it generated proportional voltage will be generated corresponding to position of output shaft so now let us review with this servo mechanism suppose in in initial condition there will be no output from this potentiometer because the output shaft is at its initial position suppose here the user gives input command signal to this motor so from the user the command signal is given in terms of the angles so let us say here the angle given is x degree so that x degree angle is going to be con converted to corresponding voltage you can say vx so corresponding voltage is generated at vx vx at this terminal so here this is nothing but the you can say the differentiator in short it is going to take difference between its two terminals so for this difference amplifier one end is input command signal and other end is the feedback signal from output shaft so this is nothing but the current position so here at the other input of this differential amplifier the voltage corresponding to output shaft is going to be generated 
and the same is going to be compared so consider the motor is at initial position and the user inputted x degree that is user wants to rotate output shaft by x degree then the corresponding voltage vx is generated at this terminal then this vx is going to be compared with this out potentiometer signal so i am going to mark this signal as v pot so v pot and vx is going to be compared and the error signal is going to be generated so this error signal v is provided as a input to dc motor and depending upon this the motor starts rotating corresponding to the error signal as we have seen in the internal design the shaft gear of dc motor is coupled with output shaft gear so as the dc motor moves the shaft is also going to move by corresponding amount so here this arrangement is shown by these three gears so depending upon movement of motor the output shaft is also moved and accordingly the again the potentiometer is changes its resistance and correspondingly the v pot is also going to be changed so again the same process is going to be repeated that is again it is com compared that is at second iteration again the v pot is going to be compared with vx and the error signal is cal calculated and the same is fed back to the motor so depending upon the motor movement the gear of dc motor is going to be ro rotated as these are coupled to output shaft so output shaft is also rotated by the same amount and again the that movement is going to vary resistance of potentiometer and correspondingly you will get another v pot resist v pot voltage so at third iteration again these two are going to be compared so this process is going to be repeated unless and until the error signal will be equal to this error signal will be equal to zero so when this error signal will be equal to zero when your v pot will be exactly equal to your vx so in that case your error voltage will be equal to zero so no input is provided to this motor so obviously motor stops rotating so obviously the gear which is connected on the dc motor stops rotating so obviously output shaft will be fixed at that position so now the output shaft will be fixed at the position of x degree so correspondingly the this process or the position of this output shaft will remain x degree unless and until you apply the second input signal so suppose the user again input y degree that is he wants to rotate the motor by y degree further then this y degree will be correspondingly converted to its proportional voltage of vy so again it is going to be compared with the potentiometer voltage so now the potentiometer is going to produce you vx because in the last iteration you have made that equal to vx so now vx and vy are going to be compared and the error signal is generated so there will be some error signal obviously because vx is not equal to vy so that error signal is going to be given as input to this dc motor so correspondingly dc motor starts rotating so correspondingly the gear connected to dc motor also rotated and output shaft also starts rotated by the same amount so again the when the output shaft rotates the resistance of potentiometer again changes by some amount again that voltage is going to be generated again the same is going to be compared with vy so again this process is going to be repeated unless and until this v pot voltage will be exactly equal to vy and the error signal will be zero so motor stops rotating and output shaft will be moved to position of y degree so similar process is going to be carried out so this process happens at very high sp speed so you will not actually recognize this process but inside servo motor when you provide or when you write some angle to servo motor this process happens internally so you can resemble this operation with closed loop system that is feedback taken from output and the error signal it's going to be generated so the further part we will look into the next part that is part b